on uh, on Ten Point, and Magnus has arrived while we were looking at the standings. All uh, players of this match have now taken their seats. I think we'll see a ceremonial first move in Magnus' game against Maxim. Yeah, the ceremonial first move. I guess they're really intending to magnify the magnitude of this magnificent occasion. With the Magnus. Uh, taking on Maxi Vashel Girl. <laughs> too, too much, too early, David. I think a ceremony and first move will be made by Dana Rizmita Ozola. I think there were also some CU meetings happening today in Tirana, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, very soon this clash will be off, and Magnus, he's been playing Maxine Mavanch just last weekend. Um, and that is not Dana. I overheard that in the playing hall. I'm not sure who the lady is, but she is not Dana. And we see Magnus go for D4. I was gonna say just last weekend, right before this tournament started, these two met in the finals of the uh, Champions Chess when Maxime had the upper hand there. That's right. These two, of course, really familiar with each other, two good friends of the same 1990 generation. And in that clash, Maxime actually uh, did eventually take it. It was really close. It always is between these two. Magnus historically has had a uh, significant lead in their head-to-head -head when he has the white pieces, so I think starting with white here uh, will give him a bit of an advantage, but of course Maxime in top, top form recently, and uh, I think this is one that Magnus will feel a lot of pressure needing to strike, uh, because on the rest of the board it's going to be really close, as we saw yesterday, uh, especially with the Offerspiel team, it was up and down, and, uh, yeah, especially when the nerves are jangling, with so much at stake. Uh, Magnus will want to be the leader for a team. For sure, he is the only player in this match who is higher rated than his opponent. There we see the handshake and the 4 reappears on the board. I was just going to ask you, will we see Maxime's trademark Grunfeld? The answer is no. The answer is no, and Maxime of late has switched towards the Queen's Gambit because one of his main openings uh, gets 1d4, far less predictable. I think maybe that's uh, coincided with this upturn in form, the fact that he's become uh, less of a kind of sitting target, he's now uh, switching things up uh, regularly, Maxime Bashir de Graaf, and okay, the Queen's Gambit is accepted as we see with this last move, uh, not a real Gambit, the Queen's Gambit, yeah. but uh, <laughs> White does take a couple of moves to win the ball back. You talked just yesterday about how the Queen's Gambit accepted has uh, become all the rage again lately. Yeah, and it's because it leads to a lot of forcing lines back often. Uh, at the very uh, kind of worst case scenario, it has to suffer a small disadvantage. Often it's kind of a symmetrical pawn structure. Here, Magnus plays not the most common move. He gives a check with the white queen. Um, he'll regain his pawn next move, no matter what. Uh, but meanwhile, Maxine Bashir the Graf here, he can block this check in three uh, very sensible ways with the bishop, the knight, maybe even a pawn. And still, well known position, theoretical. I think he's just trying to steer the game, Magnus here, towards more positional waters. Um, that match that they had against each other last week online. Maxime really did, did thrive.
Kings are more than they are essential, essential even in the endgame. And I think there was actually a big threat on the board if Maxim hadn't done this, if he'd just been one move too slow, for example, play Brook's A4, uh, White's King could sneak up, maybe it's G4, also the E-Pawn is just running home to victory. So this pawn needs to be located, King to D7 will do that job if Magnus gives a check. Wow, which he has actually done. I was going to say there might be a disconnect now between White's two pawns. Very risky decision taken by Magnus, maybe aware that uh, Wynn might be essential for his team. Uh, because now the Black King is going to be a perfect blockader. What's his idea? Is Rook, Rook C3 ever an idea in giving up, giving up the S-Pawn? It's definitely an idea. Yeah, if you check, this could be a big for Black. How does Black prevent this, I guess? You have to push him on. Yeah, and my idea was to maybe play Rook B1. Okay, switching attention towards the B-Pawns. Yeah, and suddenly everything's hanging. White Pawns will disappear and Black's uh, corresponding pawns. Yeah, that's my only concern. Might we see a mass liquidation here? The other idea of Vienna would be similar to yours, but maybe a 6 I don't know if this is ambitious uh, as well. It's important. At least now I break through to the 7th rank. Kick away the blockading king. I think I've done, as I said, a great job because as we see now, as we play around with the position, the bar doesn't move as much before. A lot of the moves we tried, uh, Black was getting into big danger. Uh, so I think he's done a great job weathering the storm for now and this would be, a, a, I think, a matter of how many questions can Magnus still ask in this endgame. Yeah, I think he has to go down those paths that you mentioned, but accurate defense here should hold for Black. Uh, still very much a two-result game. Black will never really win this, uh, but at the moment he looks favorite to draw. Let's just say that nothing dramatic is happening in this match that we are missing. Maybe I can just mention one.